The last time this volcano erupted was about 500 years ago, but recently, small tremors have grown really frequent, to such an extent that scientists have been recording more than a thousand a month. I'm talking about the Campi Flegri supervolcano in Italy. At one point, just a few weeks ago, the area was rattled by a 4.4 magnitude earthquake with 150 tremors in just one night. It was the strongest earthquake in over 40 years. A lot of locals spent the night in their cars, but in the morning, the shakes were followed by another earthquake, a bit weaker with a magnitude of 3.6. So is Italy in danger? Well, the quake itself wasn't big enough to cause serious damage, but it evoked a lot of panic. At the moment, local authorities are working on grandiose emergency plans. If worse comes to worse, they'll have to evacuate hundreds of thousands of people. One of the reasons is the proximity of this area to Naples with more than 3 million inhabitants. At the moment, they're even considering an option of paying people to leave their homes. Right now, schools remain closed in the Campi Flegri area. The authorities are allocating more than 500 million euros to ensure the safety of buildings and constructions in the area. A yellow alert is still in place in the region where 80,000 people live. There's the so-called red zone, which is the most dangerous area. There are 1,250 houses in this red zone, and all of them will be at high seismic risk if an eruption begins. Plus, more than twice as many will be at medium risk. Italy is a country prone to seismic activity, and Pozzuoli is a densely populated area that is located on one of the most dangerous supervolcanoes in Europe. Campi Flegri has 24 hidden underground craters and dwarfs the better known Vesuvius. Yes, the very volcano that wiped the ancient Roman city of Pompeii off the face of the earth in 79 CE. This city thrived near the base of Mount Vesuvius at the Bay of Naples. In the time of the early Roman Empire, 20,000 people lived in Pompeii. They were merchants, manufacturers, farmers, and others. The soil in the region was rich and fertile, so there were lots of orchards and vineyards. Strangely, no one knew that this black earth was the legacy of an earlier eruption of Mount Vesuvius. The area was a favorite summer destination for rich Romans. Sadly, at noon on August 24, 79 CE, all this prosperity came to an end. The peak of Mount Vesuvius exploded, sending a 10-mile-high mushroom cloud of ash and pumice into the stratosphere. For the next 12 hours, the eruption was wreaking havoc on the city. Volcanic ash and a hail of pumice stones, some of which were three inches in diameter, showered Pompeii. It forced the city's occupants to flee in terror. Around 2,000 people holed up in stone structures and cellars, paralyzed by fear. They hoped to wait out the eruption. Who knows? Maybe if they had decided to leave the city immediately after the beginning of the eruption, they would have had some chances to survive. A westerly wind protected the city from the first stages of the eruption. But soon, a giant cloud of hot ash and gas rushed down the western slope of Vesuvius. It engulfed the city, burning everything in its way. This disastrous cloud was followed by a flood of volcanic mud and rock, which completely buried the city. As if the volcano was making sure no one would survive, a cloud of toxic gas poured onto the city, finishing the lives of a few survivors on August 25th. A flow of rock and ash followed. It collapsed roofs and walls and turned the city into a giant cemetery. When a supervolcano erupts, the consequences are usually catastrophic. Supervolcanoes have at least once had an eruption with a volcanic explosivity index of 8, which is the largest recorded number on the index. Supervolcanoes are often extremely large, with no cone at all. That's because they're typically the remains of gigantic magma chambers that once flared up, leaving behind a caldera. They're usually located over hotspots and appear when huge volumes of magma are trying to escape from deep underground. Eventually, they burst through Earth's surface. Sometimes, all this magma gets stuck, unable to break through the planet's crust. And then, 
massive pools of pressurized magma gather at a depth of several miles. The pressure keeps growing because more and more magma is trying to get to the surface. At one point, a super eruption goes off. The most recent super eruption happened in New Zealand. Well, when I say recent, I meant around 26,500 years ago. That's when a supervolcano beneath the surface of Lake Taupo spewed into the air more than 300 cubic miles of ash and pumice. Imagine 500,000 Great Pyramids of Giza flying up into the air at the same time. That's how incredibly powerful that eruption was. But the most exciting and confusing thing about the eruption was that the Taupo volcano didn't simply go off like many others. At first, everything was going as usual. Tons and tons of pressurized magma had built up under the surface, and the pressure was getting higher and higher. But after the rock cracked and the first portion of lava rushed out of the crater, something went wrong, and the supervolcano took a break. Only several months later, the disastrous eruption shook the ground. Thousands of tons of lava, rocks, and ash flew high into the atmosphere. The unusual pattern of Taupo still confuses scientists. The Indonesian eruption at Toba Caldera 75,000 years ago was the largest eruption in the last 2 million years. Experts estimate that the eruption could have released hundreds of thousands of tons of sulfuric acid, which might have even caused a several degree cooling of the planet's surface. But nowadays, the impact is hard to detect because of glaciers that covered the ground afterward. There are also several so-called supervolcanoes that haven't lived up to this name yet because they've never produced any super eruptions. For example, in 1883, Indonesian volcano Krakatoa went off. The power of the eruption tore the volcano's walls open, and cold seawater rushed into its molten insides. The difference in temperatures made the volcano blow up with a deafening boom. It was clearly heard 3,000 miles away in Australia. It earned the blast the title of the loudest sound in history. But even though the consequences of this event were truly catastrophic, it still turned out not powerful enough to be called a super eruption. It only had a volcanic explosivity index of 6. Then. There's also Mauna Loa. It's a shield volcano, which means it won't produce explosive eruptions, but its sheer size makes this monster of a volcano extremely dangerous. At the moment, the volcano seems to be at peace with its surroundings. Research equipment doesn't show any signs of activity on Mauna Loa, but if Mauna Loa did suddenly erupt, lava flows could reach the ocean and the most populated and touristy places like Captain Cook very fast, in a matter of hours. The last time the volcano erupted, lava got as far as the outskirts of Hilo on the other side of the island. That's where the University of Hawaii is located. Luckily, people had a few weeks warning to get ready for the disaster. Over its recorded history, Mauna Loa has been erupting pretty regularly, almost every six years. On the bright side, big island volcanoes including Mauna Loa aren't really very volatile. That's because they're shield volcanoes. These volcanoes got such a name because they aren't really very high and resemble a warrior shield placed flat on the ground. Shield volcanoes are formed by very fluid lava. It travels way farther and forms much thinner flows than the lava erupted from a stratovolcano, which is conically shaped and tall like the infamous Krakatoa in Indonesia. So, if Mauna Loa erupts, there probably won't be ash clouds or tons of debris. The most dangerous thing will be lava. Since Mauna Loa is a shield volcano, its lava is extremely fluid and voluminous, which allows it to flow far and fast. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.